Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Side Hustle Seattle. So today I have with me Mrs. Tiffany Miles. If you do not know, she is an NNA ambassador. She's a mentor. She's a mobile notary. Um, she's an Arizona notary advocate. And you're a finalist for Influencer of the Year, which is freaking huge. And I got to see you at the NNA conference. Um, and your session was incredible. And I learned so much. And so I wanted to make sure that I got you on the channel. I thought your vibe was great. I give a lot of great information to share. So first things first, introduce yourself. Who are you? How long have you been a notary? Like, what do you have going on? Well, I am Tiffany Miles out of Arizona. I have been a notary for 24 years, not to tell my age, but <laughs> yes, my oldest. <laughs> my oldest is 24. Um, I started off in Ohio. So I started off in Ohio as a notary, kind of like notarizing the medical documents, school documents. So that's how I kind of started in the field. And then I kind of branched it off and brought it to Arizona. Nice. How long have you been in Arizona? Uh, since 2008. Oh, yeah. You've been in Arizona for a long time. And then I yes. saw that you are an NNA ambassador. Um, how did that come yes, about? I did they hit you up? Did you go to ask for it? Um, so I was nominated. I don't know who nominated wow. me. So <laughs> someone nominated me. So I am, I thought I was the only one in Arizona. I guess there's someone else that really hasn't been active, but yeah. I am the primarily the NNA ambassador in Arizona. That's of course starting the advocacy group. So I was hit up and got the email of congratulations with the emblem. And wow. I was uh, put as one of the NNA ambassadors for National Notary Association. That's pretty awesome. Um, I know that's huge. And I know like you help work the hotlines and everything, right? Answer questions and. Well, um, mm -mm. Ah, you know, I got the hotline. No, ambassadors don't do that. We pretty, we have a monthly meeting and we discuss different things and different changes um, related to the NNA that, that are brought up. And then we're in the process of possibly maybe starting to incorporate notaries nationwide to start doing some nationwide events. But Typically, it's all about what you do in your community for the NNA as an ambassador and how you're helping notaries, you know, to navigate the system when they need help, when they need mentorship, when they need education, just everything across the board. Yeah, absolutely. Now, like I said, I saw you at the NNA conference and NNA conference is great, by the way, and hopefully you enjoyed yourself, too, because that was a lot of fun. Um, but you talked about general notary work, and I feel like that's so important, right? Because the thing you hear over and over again, loan signings, loan signings, loan signings, and I feel like that's just what people anchor on in like the notary world. Um, but you're one of the first, I think you're the first session I've ever been to that specifically was talking about general notary work and like broke down all the places you can go and made it seem like that's something you can actually do. So like what percentage of your current business is general notary work? Not a lot. No. Not, not a lot. Um, I get contacted all the time for general notary work, but yeah. um, that's not like something I'm like, oh, I need to do general notary work. Of because course. General notary work is going to be there. So I really can't say it's a percentage. Um, I really can't say loan signings is a percentage either because I, in the last two, two and a half years, probably since January for sure this year, I've kind of like scaled back as far as loan signings are concerned. Uh -huh. I'm not going to say the market is slow for me here. I still get requests, but I've kind of moved mostly towards doing them on Ron. Yeah. As going in person. I'm very particular about the ones that I work with. I probably only work with about four signing services. Yeah. To be honest. I mean, yes, I have a plethora of ones that I used to work with, but as far as the percentages, it, I'm going to say 50-50, but people call me all the time for, you know, general notary work. I do apostilles. I do wedding officiant, long signing. So I do it all. So it yeah. just depends what's required, you know, under general notary work. Um, I do some type of estate planning documents as well with attorneys. So it just kind of depends on what the need is at that time. So I really can't pinpoint what the percentage is because yeah. I have a broad range of all the services that I provide. Of course. And um, I'll get back to general notary work in a, a second, but you do apostilles and you do wedding officiants, right? And that's something I've heard more from notaries, which is just like broaden what you do, like expand your arsenal. It can't just be, you know, loan documents, general notary work. You have to have a full business. How long have you been a wedding officiant and apostille? And do you find that like, since you've added that to your business, it's way more successful than just sticking to the general notary work and loan signings? So I've been a wedding officiant since 2017, but oh, I, was, nice. I was just, I was sitting on it. I wasn't marketing it. I wasn't doing any of that. Yeah. I started marketing it probably like in the last year to year and a half. Um, I have decided to not do it in the summer months, not because it's hot, but just because it's not a really a popular time Oh yeah, on vacation. People are out, you know, traveling. And so 
the market, not only the real estate market slows, but also wedding officiant. People are really not getting married in the summer summer months. So June and July, I typically don't do any weddings. Um, I did not do any weddings, I don't think, in June. Yeah. I, have two, I have two in July and maybe one in August and then October, then November. And then I'm done until March of 2024. So yeah. I those come. That's great. Yeah. But I'm at the point now that if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And then as far as the apostilles, those come whenever they decide to come. I don't, I don't market any of that. I don't market any of my stuff anymore. I just make sure it's out there. And then I try to make sure my SEO is good. And then if I have any type of posting that goes up, I try to make sure my virtual assistant can get that stuff up for me. But I'm not like hammering away, running the title companies, passing off flyers. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Is it because you just got into a point in your career where you're like, I'm past that point? Like my name's out there, my brand's out there. I have good uh, SEO. I have the reviews. Like it's going to come to me. Right. That, and that's kind of almost the point that I'm at. And I'm also, I'm now making it where I'm more of a family life balance. So I don't want to be working those late hours anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I try not to take a signing past six or seven o'clock at night. If it's Monday through Friday, if it's on the weekends, I'm only going to do those in the morning just because I'm trying to make sure that I am available for my family because for two years straight, I was not actively at home. I literally was gone. Yeah. <laughs> I was gone. You know, I was doing signings. I was up early in the morning. I was just ripping and running, coming in late, eating dinner late, eating on the run. And so those days just come to a point where you have to make a decision to turn them off and, and determine what works best for you. And with me, I had to determine work-life family balance and figure out what other way I can have passive income versus sitting and jumping in my car to go make 65, 75. It's not the money. It's really not about the money anymore. It's all about building relationships and making sure you are connected with the people that are going to help you. It'll come to you. Right. Yeah. So that's, then that's what I kind of base my base, what I do on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, To me, that makes sense. And then as far as like, I want to touch on definitely general notary work again, um, but I get the work-life balance, right? Like you have the time where you're grinding, but that, that comes with a sacrifice um, mm -hmm. and you can't always do that. And so now you said you do do RON. You do RON loan settings, right? Mm -hmm. I do RON, but I only do RON for a couple of clients. I may get yeah. phone calls from like my Google, my business page, but I do have two direct clients that will send me an email like, hey, here's a RON for today. It's due by tomorrow or it's due in a couple of days. And that one particular title company I work with, they physically the person that I do the rounds for, they have a ton of real estate properties in Arizona. So he'll text me and say, Hey, did you get that email? And I'm like, no, he like, all right, this one I'm available. I set it up. I do the run. I'm paid within two or three days. See, and that goes back to the relationships. It's like, you know, long, you're not even going to him. He's like, Hey, did you see it? Because right. I want you and that type of thing. So relationship is huge. Um, right. Now I wanted to circle back on general notary work. Right. And I think there's this understand, or there's this idea that it can't be profitable. Um, because it is less per, you know, it's typically less per transaction. You have to do more to make the same amount, et cetera, et cetera. How have you found that to be? Have you found that you can make it profitable? Have you found like, how have you found your ways to maximize? So you can make it profitable. It's all about every state is different. So I'll start there. You know, every state, how much money you can charge, you know, for travels, your stamps, all of that is set. If it's set, that's what you have to charge. So like here in Arizona, it's $10. So mm -hmm. I know for a fact I'm getting $10. Yeah. <laughs> However. Depending on where I'm driving to, I have to charge that mm -hmm. round mileage. And when I'm charging that mileage, I always try to end. And I guess this is like a gym. Like I think I said this before at the end of the day, I always try to end when I'm going to charge a person with a five because they're not going to have a five dollar bill. Yeah. So I'll round it up. So <laughs> yeah. say, say it's twenty five, right? Because if you include mileage and one stamp, they're at twenty five dollars. You might get thirty. Thirty. That's true. Get forty because they might really not have no change. So you got to work your magic. <laughs> Then you look up. Copy, they're like, but do you have cash app? And you're like, dang. No, nope. like, I do cash app. I, I say, I don't, they're like, do you have, do you, I will use Zelle, but yeah. nine times out of 10, I'll be like, it's cash only. And then I collect that cash and then you can yeah. sit, collect that cash for a couple of weeks at a time. Then you can see how much you've made. Exactly. Right? So that's kind of how I balance it. Um, I've made, like I said, back to journal notary, I've made decent money with apostilles, you know, $700 for one, for one client that has six documents. But I drove, Two hours yeah. for it and I booked it on a weekend. So yeah, all about how you move it around. But general notary work is what you make it. You have to figure out what your clients need. Working with an attorney is helpful because most of the time they need those documents notarized for their clients. You mm -hmm. might have some real estate agents that may have some random warranty deeds, just random items. 
hundred percent. Um, now in your session at the NNA, you talked about different places that you can go and market as far as general nerdy work, right? You mentioned like hospitals. I think we talked about, um, wasn't foster care or it was like something that had adoption centers or mm -hmm. yeah, like group homes, things like that. Like you had mentioned all that. What have you found? Like, what are just some places you found to be successful or places that people can start at? I mean, daycares, daycares. All, well, in Arizona, I'm only speaking for Arizona because I don't know what other states need, but I know in Arizona that they require, you know, criminal history affidavits have to be notarized. That verifies if you have any criminal offenses on your record. You also, from, from the daycare standpoint, sometimes they need physicals notarized. AAU leagues need things done as well because <laughs> they need sports physicals, even school physicals when the time comes around. So when school goes back in July, I'll have a flyer that will go out to different to the different schools saying, hey, do you need your kids paperwork notarized because student registrations have to be notarized. So, of course, mm -hmm. your schools group homes are related to the foster care system. So like foster care agencies, when they offer those foster care classes, a lot of those documents have to be notarized, too, because they need to verify that you legit. They don't want they don't want to be working with a criminal. So you have a lot of things that have to get notarized. There are a ton of documents that have to be notarized when it comes to foster care alone. And then on top of that, you have your attorneys that you work with and they have their own particular documents for a particular clients, you know, wills, a power of attorney. I mean, yeah, lot, assisted livings. I mean, there's a ton of documents that you will never know about that need to be notarized until you get that call to say, hey, I need this done. Exactly. And when you're going to market yourself, right, I think the thing that you hear in a lot of courses is when you're going to market yourself, bring, bring the donuts and the coffee and the, how do you, so like, is that the, is that a truth or that's not the truth? No. Okay. <laughs> you're like, don't spend your money. Oh my goodness. So I ain't trying to knock nobody's program, nobody's okay. teachings, but all I'm going to say is from my directs, basically they're like, Till they, I get often tell your notary, stop bringing us food. They don't eat that food. No, they don't, they trust, don't, it. They don't trust the food. No. Yeah. Versus if I was to go into my direct and I cater lunch for them, they're going to eat it. But if a notary come in and drop off donuts, yeah. they're not eating those donuts. You need to build a relationship first. Find out what their favorite color is. Find out what their favorite uh, team is. Like build your relationship that way. Learn how to talk to them versus trying to feed them. You know what I mean? Even giving the gift cards and all that stuff away. You have to watch. You can't cross boundaries with giving gift cards away, not knowing, because you need to think about you got the title company. If that's an escrow okay. officer, what if you crossing the you know boundaries, giving out gift cards? You just have to be careful. I would yeah. never, I would never, and I have never taken donuts or things like that to individuals I did not know. <laughs> I don't care if it's even store bought. No. 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 Okay. So when you're going, what do you present? It's just, you present yourself like, Hey, I'm Tiffany. I don't, what I, offer. So I don't go and market yeah. to individuals. And even when I did, I went and I had my flyer, right. Yeah. May have emailed them first before I even go. I'm starting an email conversation. I'm not just popping up at their door. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm a notary. Cause that's what they're used to. Yeah. You, you want to be different. You want to bring a different type of person. Like I want to be authentic. I don't want to be like, Oh yeah, I'm going to go to their office today. Going every week. Don't do it. Okay. Don't go every week. I mean, that's that's excessive. I promise you, it's excessive. Yeah. That's not a good marketing technique. I don't care how many people say it is. It does not work. It's good to know. Eyes, it does not work. Yeah. If everybody else can figure it out on their own. It has not worked in my eyes. It has not worked for individuals that I've talked to. I've mentored a lot of notaries in Arizona and they're like, but I was told to do this. And I'm like, don't that's what, yeah that's what i'm saying that's what you hear it's like okay get your business card knock down some doors go every day every week and eventually it'll happen right mm -mm. <laughs> you're like pass no build those relationships learn get those emails start emailing them first do an introduction of who you are let them know who you are let them know what you can provide let them know what you can take off their plate they might yeah. be stressed out because they don't may not like working with the one side of service they work with so they rather they might want to bring a notary on but guess what you ain't built a relationship with them so you can have that trust. Yeah. So Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, that's good to know. And I, on that general sense, like advice, right? Somebody starting off. This is what I always hear. Uh, I get people coming to me like, oh, I just, I just got my notary license. I'm about to be a loan signing agent. Now what? And my general thing for people is like, okay, don't, you just spent like a thousand dollars and you don't have no idea what you want to do yet. Like, just wait, give it a second. Like, look into it know if you actually like it this is not for everybody when mm -hmm. people are first starting out 
and they want to be successful, right? Like, what is your general, like, hey, just do these things first? So regardless if they start off part-time or full-time, first, yeah. I always tell a person, figure out what your plan is. Figure out what you want to do. Do you want to do loan signings? Do you want to do wedding officiant? You need to determine if you want to do all or some. Yeah. My suggestion is you branch out and do all because you yeah. never know what you're going to be offered, right? So when you start now, figure out your plan for that. You almost need a business plan for every single item that you want to provide or specialize in or know what aim you want to go. Because if you don't have a plan of what you want to do as a long signing agent or what you want to do as a wedding officiant or a wedding coordinator or an apostille agent, if you don't have a plan on how of how you want to attack it, then you're not going to be successful. So exactly. I always want them to plan that first, then look at what's required. Figure out what's in your budget when it comes to training, right? Mm -hmm. Can you afford a, a $800 program? Do you need yeah. a $200 a month program? Do you need to find somebody that's a mentor, that's an ambassador that you could do one-to-one -one with that's a couple of hundred dollars that's not breaking, breaking the bank because you don't want to spend all this money and you sitting on all these supplies. Yeah, yeah. You, work, you got your stamp, the ink done dried up. Like <laughs> you need to make sure that, that you have that stuff ready when it's time, I tell people don't even buy your journal and your stamp until you ready and you know, and you even read your handbook. Did you read your handbook or you yeah. want to rise? You, you got to read your handbook. If you don't yeah. have one, you need to figure out what your at least your laws are and know about the different certificates that you use in your particular state. Always say start there. Always. For sure. Yeah. It's like, don't just jump in buying all the stuff. You're like, yeah, I got a new, especially Ron. Like, I bought a new computer. I got a webcam. I got headphones. It's like, you don't even know. You don't even know what platform right. you're using. Like, just give it a second. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. Okay. Fair enough. And I like the point about like your handbook because that is very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, now, I want to make sure. So you are nominated, right, for Influencer of the Year. Um, how did that come about? Like, what? They just saw you, they're like, you're killing the game. Boom, Influencer of the Year. Like, how did that come about? So, Influencer of the Year, basically, you are nominated by notaries, not yeah. by the NBA. So, notaries, I just sent out a link. It was like, vote for me. I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, I sent out the link to vote for me. And so, when I found out at the NNA, I was like, what? Nah. That's cool. Right. And it kind of like surprised me. I was like, okay. So, I'm thankful to be a finalist out of what 4.6 million notaries yeah. out of three, you know, out of one of three. However, you know, I'm still going to keep delivering me being authentic, me being transparent, me being direct. You're not going to catch me doing nothing wrong. You ain't going to uh -huh. catch me my social media cussing. Like it's just a lot of things I'm going to protect myself of, and course. My name of what I deliver. So I being selected, I was like, okay, that's cool. But I'm running against Mark. Mark is cool, but we're not in the same bucket. So I'm like, I guess, but I want to do it. So I'm doing hey, it. <laughs> hey, I love it. I love it. That's great. Now, uh, I do I do see that you're a mentor. It said that on your um, Instagram. Do you do one-on-one -on -one mentorship with people? Mm -hmm, sure do. How, how do they get in touch with you? If so you want to get in to touch with you, hit you up. How do we do it? They can go to they can go to any of my social medias and message and they also can send me a text. I, I'm uh -huh. I'm pretty transparent. I'm not one of those ones like don't text me. Yeah. You can send me a message, you can text me. Usually I get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. I'll yeah. text you back. I'll say, What state are you in? I try to keep it to Arizona, but I've mentored notaries in other states. I don't I'm not gonna say no, I'm not gonna work with you because there's notaries in other states that have programs and they don't want to work with certain individuals. So and I get that. I don't yeah some people just don't mesh or they just don't want to work with particular people and they want to have patience with a person. So I do meet with individuals one-to-one. -one, so if they are interested, they're more than welcome to reach out. I do one-to-one -one strategy calls. It just kind of depends on what they want and where they are at in their business because everybody's in different spots. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with that. I know if it's like you're just starting out, maybe it could be more general, not general, not state specific. It's going to be state specific. So that's awesome. And I will make sure I leave all of your information below so that if people want to contact you, they can. Any final thoughts? Any final things that you want to say? No, not really. I mean, if anybody voted for me, of course, I appreciate it. Um, I'm always here uh, for help. I do have some new stuff that will be coming up and coming out. I am working on a um, couple of books. So those will be coming soon. Yeah. I'll be working on another platform as well to provide some webinars on different topics. And all these topics, these topics are 
long. I mean, we talking about like business consulting, you know, how to open a group home. I, I just have all of that information oh, nice. and I'm able to help people do it. So I probably have over 50 topics that I'm going to be, of course, working on. I'm still working on it now. And then I'll have some eBooks coming out, just a ton of different things between wow. now and next year. But that's pretty much all I have going on. I'm not really, like I said, I'm not really um, in these notary streets running around. Yeah. Oh, great. If I get an alert, I'm like, mm, nope, not driving. I don't drive so far anymore. If it's not close, I'm not going. I just had to make that. <laughs> I just had to make that decision. You know, it doesn't make sense, right? Does it make sense for yeah. me and my family for me to get up out of my bed, drive 30 minutes, drive back another 30 minutes? I made $65 and then you got to drop it off to a particular drop spot. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah, yeah, like not happening. Yep. I'm just picking and choosy. So all I can say is be picking and choosy with yourself. Take care of yourself. Make sure you take care of you before you take care of the world and always put your family first. Tiffany, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being on here. I love your realness. I love how like blunt and transparent you are. So appreciate having you. Uh, and hopefully we'll have you again in the future. And yes, we will be voting for you for Influence of the Year. So appreciate it. I appreciate you guys, of course.